What's tonight? Did someone really just say Saturday? 27th night of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Is there any significance to the 27th night of Ramadan specifically? And this is what I want to address with the Nahi Ta'ala. And I want us to actually see it from the lens of the community of the Prophet Now, we see all of these narrations about the special nature of the last 10 nights. And then you start to find some narrations that suggest something very interesting that Rasulullah pushed harder as the end of Ramadan came closer. So for example, there's a very beautiful narration from an numan ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that we prayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one year and it was the 23rd night. And we prayed with him until we finished about a third of the night in prayer. And then that same year, the Prophet Sallallahu stood up and he led us in prayer on the 25th night. And we prayed until we finished about half of the night in prayer. And then he said, we prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the 27th night of Ramadan. And he said, we prayed with him until we thought we were going to miss suhoor. Okay, that's one narration. Another narration from Bilal al-Habashi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the mu'adhan of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, seek out Laylatul Qadr in the last week of Ramadan. Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu also says, in the last seven of Ramadan. So you have these narrations, right? And here's a very interesting narration, one that causes a lot, a lot of ulama to come to a conclusion about this 27th night of Ramadan. And here's the scene. Who was the first Khalifa to gather the people behind one Imam for Taraweeh? You guys are going to have to answer me. We need energy, inshallah. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Very good. So the Prophet sallam, we know that in his lifetime, he prayed a few nights with the Sahaba in Taraweeh in congregation. And then the Prophet Sallallahu was afraid that it would be taken as a fard on the ummah, that it would become an obligation for them. So the Prophet Sallallahu instead encouraged them to do their taraweeh at home, right? Just so that it would not be written as an obligation upon us. So that was the wisdom of the Prophet Sallallahu However, the sunnah is established in that regard. Now, when Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu assumed the khilafah, and it's only two and a half years after the Prophet Sallallahu death because the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu was very short. People were praying in the masjid again, but they were praying in groups. So you had some groups praying that with, with an imam that would read 20 ayat per rak'ah, and he would read them very, very, very fast. You had some groups praying with 25. You had some groups praying with 30 ayat. So they're praying behind different imams, and Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu gathered them behind one imam. What was the name of that imam? Ubay ibn Ka'b, remember that, Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who is Ubay? Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a man that the Prophet sallallahu said that you should take the Qur'an from him. He put him in the category of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Salim, Mawla Abi Hudayfa. He put him in that high category of people to take the Qur'an from, okay? That is Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu. Ubay is the person the Prophet Sallallahu told, Allah commanded me to read Qur'an to you, to read Surah Al-Bayyinah to you. And Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Ya Rasulullah, Samani, wait a minute, Allah said my name? He said, yes, Allah said your name. And he started to cry. Before, he could, before the Prophet Sallallahu could even recite Qur'an to him, the fact that Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu to recite a surah to him by name is very special to Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So he is a companion who reads the Qur'an the way that it should be read, who lives the Qur'an, who received the Qur'an from the Prophet Sallallahu And so he's leading the Sahaba in Jama'ah, in Taraweeh, within a decade of the death of the Prophet Sallallahu in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Okay? Now, Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what was the point of all of this? Ubay was the person who said, I swear by Allah, 
that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. You see now why it's so significant? <laughs> He's not just some companion. It's not just a hadith. It's from an authority, particularly in Quran, an authority in Ramadan, a person who has high ranking amongst the Sahaba, who says, I swear by Allah that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night of Ramadan. I heard it from the Prophet wasallam that the 27th night is Laylatul Qadr. If you're sitting in the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, and it's Ramadan, and Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu stands up and he says that, isn't that going to land in your heart in a certain way? It will, right? It will. Subhanallah. So what happens then? You then find these other narrations. Narration from Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Laylatul Qadr is the 27th night. Some other Sahaba that also said the same, the 27th, the 27th, the 27th. And someone took Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the side. It's also an another narration. And he said, oh Ubay, he said, your brother Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu was asked about Laylatul Qadr. And he said, whoever wants to catch Laylatul Qadr, let him observe every night in prayer. Not the last 10, period. <laughs> you want Laylatul Qadr? You need to observe every single night looking for Laylatul Qadr. So the point was, work, push yourself. So Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu responded, he said, Rahimallah, Rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him. Arada alla yattakila, yattakila nasu. He did not want, may Allah have mercy on him, my brother Ibn Mas'ud did not want people to get lazy and complacent. But he reaffirmed, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu tell me it was the 27th night. How do we come to terms with this? Another narration, by the way. An old man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, it's hard for me to do all these last 10 nights. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told him, seek out the odd nights then. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I can't even do all of the odd nights. فَقَالَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكَ بِالسَّابِعَةِ then make sure that you catch the 27th night. It's an authentic narration as well. What do we take from all of this? Well, first and foremost, Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu is being truthful. No one doubts the authority of Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu. However, the question is, is it the 27th night every single year or was it just that time that the Prophet ﷺ was telling him that? Another possibility, is the Prophet Sallallahu was saying that the 27th of the last 10 nights is the most likely of the odd nights on a recurring basis to be Laylatul Qadr. That's also a possibility, right? It is the most likely of the last 10 nights to be Laylatul Qadr. That's also a possibility there. Because we already mentioned the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu that they prayed with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and Laylatul Qadr that year was the 23rd night. Is there any practical benefit to this or did I just waste 10 minutes of your time? Or eight minutes of your time? Here's what I will say about this, which is very important. The practical benefit of this is that Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not only show up to lead Qiyam on the 27th night, even though he thought it was 27th night, for sure. He would lead the Sahaba every single night. He didn't leave his i'tikaf. There is absolutely no indication of the Sahaba taking breaks at this time. However, one of the practical benefits, and some of the ulama mentioned about the narration of that old man, if you have the situation of that old man, so let's say, for example, you work a job that gives you night shifts, and your job's only going to give you one or two nights off from the last 10 nights. Then, on the basis of that hadith, maybe you say, all right, well, if I can only take one night off of the last 10 nights, and I can only observe the full i'tikaf, the full qiyam, I'll take the 27th night because there's some particular likelihood or probability according to some of the companions that this one is the most likely night. However, for everybody else, subhanAllah, every single one of the last 10 nights was precious. You also don't know if your odd is even or your even is odd, the moon sighting. You don't know. So you push yourself and you push yourself and you push yourself. With all of that being said, dear brothers and sisters, it's the 27th night. <laughs> push yourself, push yourself. If you were in that masjid and Ubay radiallahu anhu stood up and said, I swear by Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu pointing to the grave told me it was the 27th night. And I don't want you to get lazy and complacent, but I told you it was the 27th night. Imagine if Sheikh Yasser stood up wearing a vest, his vest in all of its glory and said, it's the 27th night. It's going to land in a certain way, right? Seriously, your brothers and sisters, 
Alhamdulillah for what we have. What a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have it. Push yourself tonight. Don't waste any of these precious moments because if you were sitting in that message with a Sahaba and you just heard that, oh my God, this is a night. It's not the night for sure, but it's a night. And of course, the practical benefit, even if it was 90%, that 27th night is the is Laylatul Qadr every single year. Are you really going to miss out on Khairum and Alfi Shahab for the last 10 nights, even if it's 10%? And the last benefit I'll say in this regard, by the way, the last two nights of Ramadan, this might be a this is most likely going to be a 30 night Ramadan. The 30th night. Seek it until its last moment. Every indication is that the Sahaba only picked up their worship as the last 10 nights went along. One of the things that you see happen, and it's natural sometimes, is that after the 27th night, everything kind of dips. It's like we get into Eid mode right after the 27th night. No, no, no. We have a few more precious nights. We still have the 29th night out there. And the 30th night could be Laylatul Qadr too, because the odd could be the even, and the even could be the odd. Let's push ourselves, inshallah ta'ala, and let's remember our brothers and sisters in Al-Aqsa in our dua. Do not leave your brothers and sisters out. I know how many people are watching the videos and following the news. Our hearts need to be connected, right? Concern needs to be there. Let that concern translate into dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them victory over their oppressors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free that sacred masjid, the first qibla of the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free it from occupation and free it from oppression. Allahumma ameen. Don't forget them and don't forget the other Muslims who are not only having to think about in the last 10 nights, you know, whether or not they can adjust their sleep schedules. They're having to worry about grenades falling on them and military boots on their necks and people mistreating them while they try to pray. So don't forget them, dear brothers and sisters, in your dua tonight. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.